On this episode of Super Tips, we're going to cover the first three things every new supervisory committee member should do when they arrive on the committee. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Super Tips, where superheroes come to train. This is the only show dedicated to supervisory committee members and audit committee members. I'm your host, Anson Cooley, principal at Synergy Credit Union Consulting. And in this episode, we're gonna cover the three powerhouse tips that every new supervisory committee member should know to maximize their effectiveness. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click like on this video. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do as a new supervisory committee member is understand your role. As with any other job, you want to get an understanding of the economic environment and the industry environment in which the organization you're supporting operates. Okay. Also, you want to figure out where do you get your grounding and your power from. According to the Code of Federal Regulations, the supervisory committee should serve as an accountability function to the credit union's board of directors and management. More specifically, your com the committee ensures that the credit union meets financial reporting mandates and that proper practices are implemented for protecting member assets. Understanding the range of power and responsibilities vested in the supervisory committee is extremely important for you to be successful in your job. Next thing you want to do is read your charter. Moreover, you want to make sure that your supervisory committee has a charter. The charter is where you get your power from as a committee. It eliminates the confusion as to who does what and when. Being able to refer back to your charter as a supervisory committee member eliminates the need for saying, well, this is what I think and this is what you think versus us being able to refer to the charter document and says, well, the charter says in this situation, we get the right of way. Every supervisory committee should have a written charter approved by the board. And frankly, even if the board doesn't approve the charter, you as a supervisory should still write your charter because it's what embodies your power as a committee. Okay. Now, granted, there are some supervisory committees that are uh, adjacent or they are, are just a committee of the board and not separate and this is different from each state but I recommend if I was on a supervisory committee or I wouldn't be on a supervisory committee that does not have an approved charter why because it outlines things like who should be responsible for internal audit who should the internal auditor um, actually report to who should be handling the budget for the internal audit function how long should management be taking to respond to audit committee findings these are all things that are typically outlined in a supervisory committee charter and it leads to more effective communication between a supervisory committee and the board as well as more effective communication between a supervisory committee and the management team and lastly, you need to get up to speed with all the audit and regulatory findings. All right. And so as now that you are a new supervisory committee member, you need to get your audit tracking document. You should have a document that you can receive from the supervisory committee chair or your internal auditor that lists out all of the open findings from the reviews that have happened over the last nine to 12 months and review them. And as a new supervisory committee member, identify which ones are stale. Also, you want to get access to the last report of exam so that you can read through it. Okay. And then you can see which items are still open. Now, there's somebody on the other end of this lens, lens that's saying supervisory committee members, last report of exam, yes. And that's one of the reasons why you should have a charter in place because there should be no debate as to whether or not a duly elected supervisory committee member should have access to an external audit, a supervisory, excuse me, a, ex, a regulatory exam or any audit report and all that should be outlined in your charter and even if 
you don't have a charter, you should be able to ask for the most recent report of exam findings, as well as the most recent findings from your internal audits. Whether or not you're a new supervisory committee member or one that's been on a committee a, a long time, these tips will help you make your committee more effective and make you a more effective and contributing member of the supervisory committee. On the next episode, we're gonna cover the three crucial questions you should be asking after you receive a completed audit report. See you next time. Hello, my name's Anson Cooley and I'm the principal at Synergy Credit Union Consulting. Over the past 10 years, I've come to realize two things with regard to supervisory committees. Ever increasing responsibilities and not enough time or resources to effectively fulfill your duties. With this in mind, I decided to create the most comprehensive, effective, and fun supervisory committee course on the market. We accomplished this by listening to you. Over the past 10 years, I've had the privilege of teaching over 14 supervisory committee schools. With that experience and the feedback from the attendees, we created this course. Our online course is comprised of five modules, complete with quizzes, bonus content, and instructor access. After taking this interactive course, you'll never settle for a webinar again. To register for the course, please click the link below or you can visit us at thecomprehensivesupervisorycommittiecourse.com. We offer both individual pricing and group discounts. Thank you for your time and I'm looking forward to being your instructor.